Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. They did it with 101 Dalmatians. They did it with Alice in Wonderland and even Cinderella. And they kinda sorta did it with Maleficent. Now, Disney continues their new trend of making live action adaptations of their animated classics with The Jungle Book. And while the quality and appeal of those adaptations I mentioned has been a little hit and miss, it cannot be disputed that The Jungle Book is the greatest of these so far. There is plenty in this version to reward fans of the original musical family film and Disney fans in general, but The Jungle Book quickly establishes itself as its own animal. Uh, uh, no pun intended. Darker and edgier than the original, and with only a few passing references to the original bouncy musical score, this new version is an intense action adventure full of surprises, eye-popping visual storytelling, and edge-of-your-seat excitement. The Jungle Book contains sequences of danger and portrayals of violence that may terrify the young children who accidentally get taken along because of the original film's non-threatening family-friendly legacy, but if they're old enough to handle uh, Lord Voldemort or Lord Vader, either of the lords really, then your kids, your teens, your adult friends, and heck, even your grandparents will be treated to a visually lush and thematically rich thrill ride from director John Favreau that pushes movie-making technology to new and more exhilarating heights. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Now, calling The Jungle Book a live-action adaptation, that may be a bit of a stretch, although you'd be forgiven for making the mistake. In the end credits of this film, you can read quite clearly that this entire film, the entirety of this lush, exotic jungle adventure, was actually filmed in downtown Los Angeles. Every character, every animal, every leaf and waterfall, vine and tree, everything was created inside a computer. The only real element in the whole movie is actor Neil Seti, who plays Mowgli, the human raised by wolves in the jungles of India. This is definitely something that you must be told because from its very first opening shot, which beautifully transitions from a heavily stylized version of the Walt Disney Castle logo into a literal immersion into the jungle, that sense of place is palpable. This jungle looks spectacular, but the setting is nothing compared to the animal characters that populate it. Speaking dialogue in the grand tradition of Disney talking animals, but moving their mouths in a way that actually looks organic. Prancing and preening the way real animals do, and it only takes a few moments of adjustment, if any time at all, to accept the reality of the movie. And once that's out of the way, the characters can really get to work on you. As I mentioned in my introduction, this iteration is a lot more mature than the previous version. It's edgier. You can see the sanitation, the sanding off of the edges, if you will, that were necessary to produce the original jazzy children's musical back in the old swinging 60s. Well, in this version, those edges are right back on, baby. Sher Khan, the tiger, voiced by Idris Elba, is evil, deadly. He, he murders animals and he is one scary SOB. Ka the snake is female this time with the sultry, silky voice of Scarlett Johansson purring its seductive, trance-inducing dialogue at you in full surround sound. And let me tell you, Ka's brief appearance in IMAX 3D filling the screen then slowly emerging from the screen right at you, it will give you chills. The animated version of Ka got bopped in the head and slinks away making rusty hinge sounds. This snake, this one is a little harder to defeat. Baloo the bear, voiced by a brilliantly cast Bill Murray, has some edge too. In the beginning of the film, he's actually taking advantage of Mowgli, putting him in grave danger for his own selfish interests. It's a bold choice that makes him less lovable right off the bat but it makes the evolution of their friendship much more rich and gives the moments where Baloo puts himself in danger to save Mowgli so much more depth that I applaud the difference. 
Beyond that, the ending of the film is different. King Louis the orangutan is no longer merely colorful. He's huge, monstrously huge, and imposing in a way that he never was before. And Bagheera the panther? Well, Bagheera's about the same. There's a lot of deviations from the original animated film, including the scope and visual grandeur of the climax, and tons of little details that serve the story well. It's very clear that director Jon Favreau did not just want to remake the animated musical, and he made something completely new and fresh. That's why my only complaint about this film is a nitpick at best. And that's the, some would say, necessary fan service of including the beloved songs from the Disney animated classic. My biggest question going in was, how would the songs fit in? Would they even bother? After all, last year's Cinderella sidestepped this issue perfectly by just ignoring the classic songs, even bibbidi bobbidi boo and just being its own thing, even having its own little original ditty recur a couple of times throughout that movie. Now we have The Jungle Book, this ultra-realistic, intense, dramatic, and surprisingly grounded in reality film. And the animated version contains two of the most beloved songs in the Disney canon. Both of those songs appear here, and they are sung, sort of warbled a little bit, in heavily abbreviated versions, and it's done just a little awkwardly, almost like, hey, okay, King Louie, he's being really scary, and this scene is totally working, but we know you're expecting the song here, so we'll give you a verse or two, then he'll go back to being scary, okay? It's like the studio's fulfilling an unwritten compact with the audience, and frankly, I'd really have been fine without it. Later, during the end credits, we do get full versions of a few of the classics, including Scarlett Johansson doing a silky smooth version of Ka's song, Trust in Me. And I tell you, those versions really worked for me. The songs, and I love those songs, would probably have fit better if they were taken out of their original scene context and were just relegated to the end credits, because the entire movie that preceded them would have already got the audience's pulses racing and their knees knocking, and it wouldn't be the worst thing to send them out of the theater with their toes tapping. But that's my minor quibble with an otherwise major piece of art. I award The Jungle Book a large bag of popcorn, a nearly perfect motion picture that pulls the heartstrings, awakens the senses, and fully entertains. Go ahead, see it in IMAX 3D, and let Disney take you deep into an immersive world that must be seen to be believed. After seeing their take on the Jungle Book, you'll be primed and ready for next year's adaptation of Beauty and the Beast, and you'll be calling out the names of your other favorites. Like, all right, Disney, do Aladdin. Go ahead. Uh, okay, do Hunchback of Notre Dame. I can tell you for me, after seeing a pulse-pounding stampede sequence here, I'm personally calling for a live-action version of The Lion King and Pronto. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget, you can follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. Also, take a moment to click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You can view all of our other videos, and while you're there, do us a favor and click subscribe. You'll find us easier next time. You'll stay updated on the release of upcoming videos, and it helps us out. So please, subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and ooby-doo. I want to be like you, ooh, ooh.